Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today we have a special guest, Trey Marshall. Trey is someone who I work with for the past uh, year. He's a good friend. Uh, Trey is someone who work at our company interfacing with all the celebrity and influencers and someone who is able to get their idea and their concepts and translate into uh, blueprints or the 3D worlds that um, we were building. So Trey, do uh, you want to tell uh, people a little more about yourself and like, who is Trey? Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Happy to to potentially give some useful information to, to everyone watching. Um, I am Trey Marshall. I, I went to architecture school, uh, trained as an architect. Um, I am currently an architectural designer and an architectural thinker with a focus in digital spaces. So that is uh, how I operate and how I like to uh, give myself. <laughs> That's amazing. And what school are you? are in LA, right? The the school that yes, you're attending? Yes, in LA. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the school that I'm currently attending is called SciArc. It is the Southern, in Southern California Institute of Architecture. Amazing. Cool. And, yeah. Yes. And the reason for uh, this meeting today is that Trey and I both uh, felt like it would be really cool to share with you guys uh, some of the ways we used Midjourney to generate concept art um, for you know some of the projects that we were doing, and that is the reason for this uh, little video. Basically, I think uh, um, it'd be useful to just show like how we use Midjourney and the the methods for our workflow. Um, our workflow is specific to us; it's not necessarily for everyone there are multiple different ways to use mid-journey um this is just one potential option um yeah okay cool so yeah and i'll kind of go through um the way that i use it as a world designer in my capacity and then show how we can use it in a character concept context as well I would love that. Maybe we can generate a couple ideas that I can then use for even this channel as well. Uh, very cool. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we can do. So yeah, so we can do kind of a brief overview, overview and rundown of it, and then you know, kind of do some live examples as well. Amazing. Okay, cool. So you just want to um, share your screen? Yes. So at a base level, before we hop into Midjourney specifically, I think it's important to have a general idea of what you want to achieve and what you want to have as the end product. So what I like to do as an architect, uh, I like to have kind of a sketch of the space and then also some visual references, some spatial references, some vocab, uh, certain phrases that we think would be um, representative of the space. So for example, for this, we're going to be creating um, a kind of portal room or a hub for a world um, leading to different spaces with a few different types of programs in it. One of those being kind of like a central gathering space, a main portal, and then the surrounding portals. So here's some base ideas that we can have, right? You know, snow globe dioramas with a portal inside, portal arch with assets around it, hinting to what that portal is. Uh, Coliseum organization was really key here. Um, and then also looking at some examples of other digital spaces. So uh, these on the right are some uh, World of Warcraft examples where, you know, there's the central area always with a couple um, environment assets bordering the space. And then Minecraft servers also have a similar um, typology to them where they have stuff on the outside and an open space on the inside. That's the organization that we're going to be looking at. Some examples of mood also. Always good to have before you're starting. Right. So this is an example of, you know, of um, creating a world world br blueprint and then using Midjourney to create all the concept art elements and props that then th those would be given to like the 3D team and then you build all the uh, props based on the concepts. But 
again, only using it as a like a rough concept or um, brainstorm idea, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So this is the the end goal of our process today will be a rough concept to give uh, to the rest of the the 3D team in order to start building. So once we have all of those base mood ideas, vocabulary, and different spatial ideas, what we want to do is try and verbalize those to the AI as best we can. So kind of taking you through the entire process from top to bottom here. Uh, these were the first ideas that were popping out. Um, you can see it's not exactly where we would want uh, the concept to be in relation to what we showed earlier in the sketches and the spatial ideas. Um, but I started playing with a couple other viewpoints, a couple of other specific key phrases. So multiple portals arranged in a circle. Um, Unreal Engine is very important for when we're trying to create something for other people to look at, right? Uh, it's a recognizable form to a lot of 3D artists. Isometric camera view, also very, very key here. And you can see we're starting to get into the fantasy style that we were looking at also. And then you can click on each one to make it larger, right? If you wanted to get a better view mm -hmm. as well. Yes, exactly. So Very nice. what I would do once I would create one, if I liked it, I would, you know, up res it here, which would make this top left image. It's one, two, three, and four. Um, that would make that image larger and uh, higher resolution. So you can use that in other things, which we'll get to in a little bit. How high does it go? Does it go like 4K, 8K? Like what's the limit? Um, I'm not exactly sure. And I know they keep changing it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always improving. Yeah, so for example, for this one, I liked this general organization that it was giving. So I would hit the redo button and then it would give me one similar to that. And we're getting really close here. So this, this bottom right image is one that I really enjoyed. Um, and as you're producing these, what you want to do is also paste them into, you know, a digital whiteboard of your choosing. There's a bunch of them. Uh, today we're using Figma. Uh, but you can see where these were the original ones, not quite what we wanted. But then we start to get into some better versions. And the specifics of this, which I'll share here, uh, one that we really liked was this top left one so a virtual world acting as a nexus between different thematic worlds that's kind of the core idea multiple portals arranged in a circle secondary idea and then from there we're going into microcosm floating islands pathways in between kind of the the third layer onto it and then the last step would be adding in the thematic and visual elements so 3d environment unreal engine isometric camera view and then also very important to note, the aspect ratio that you create will drastically change the image. So when we look at some of the first ones created here, I forgot to change the aspect ratio. So the images are curated to fit into a square. Whereas with a very similar prompt with a different aspect ratio is wildly different. So that's something to to play around with, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's really, uh, really amazing. Uh, and I also want to point out that once you generate these concepts, you know, it's so important these days to also realize that they are not, you know, final concepts. So you still need a really good concept artist a lot of times to come in and modify it and change it and, you know, work with it. So it's not like this mid journey is going to completely take, out, take over all the concept artists jobs, maybe for super small studios. But, you know, real positions, you still need amazing concept artists to modify these, right? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. So once you have the gallery of options available to you throughout different things, different keywords, different key phrases, um, you want to start picking at them. And once you pick at them, you can scroll back up and down through your options, and then you can up res one that you like. So for example, this one, 
This bottom right one is fantastic. Uh, it's very, very close to what we wanted with a very similar uh, prompt, as you can see. Just going through multiple different iterations, uh, doing a redo over and over and over, just so we can see the available things that the AI can create. And then once you have that image, we can go into Photoshop. So as you're iterating and trying out different key phrases, it's important to make sure you know what works and what doesn't, and also what fits your theme and what doesn't. So if you want to go more of a cyberpunk route, maybe you add in that phrase or uh, that sort of theme into it. One great resource for that is midlibrary.io, uh, where, for example, for Disney, there are a couple other great artists here. And you can go to all styles and look at all of these. These are directly used for AI generated art. So this is perfect for any needs regarding this if you want a very specific style. This is great. I didn't know this existed there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so for as a test, um, let's kind of do like an ad lib style, or not ad lib, um, mad lib style thing. So, Alan, what's a, a type of environment or a theme that you think we should look at? I would love to see some uh, art that is stylized to maybe, you know, Overwatch or, you know, Clash of Clans, you know, something super stylistic like. Um, would we try to create a character or environment? Environment first. Okay. Yeah, let's go with like an Overwatch Blizzard theme environment, maybe of like a sci-fi building, you know? Yeah, let's do it. So, sci-fi, city, multiple buildings, um, neon signs, Kind of going from the top down like we discussed how there's different layers of it right mm -hmm. um center platform uh and then let's do we can also do different weights so let's just try that out here uh, we can do mobile game stylized 3d art 3d model and let's just do a weight of two to make it more important than the rest. And then we can try AR32, which is similar to what I showed earlier. Okay. So let's just see what that produces. Let's see. Yeah, so there were a couple things that were taken by the AI, a couple things that were missed, but overall this is like a pretty stylized art piece right with several buildings it has like this retro feel to it like it's modern but yet a little retro it's really interesting very cool and we can even go deeper into it so for example let's do instead of let's say sci-fi city still but let's say ramen shop a single building neon signs um and let's say uh white background and let's do the same mobile game stylized and aspect ratio as this one and see what that comes up with trying to get a more specific item that we can replicate does this thing like capable of generating transparent stuff like if you wanted like a logo where you have to cut it out in photoshop um it's not capable of generating actual pngs but uh it is capable of making like very simple background things like for example this like this is you can very easily cut this background out and use right right well wow, this is pretty amazing look at the look at all the detail like all the little things inside the shop um you know to build this, like if someone gave this to me and said, hey, uh, Alan, build this, like, you know, you're talking about a couple of weeks of hard work. There's so many things, right? If, if not even, if not uh, more. 
And then on top of that, building it specifically for a game engine, so it has to be done a certain way. Textures have to be done and optimized. Like this is my my brain is looking at it. Like you you know you you could look at it as a concept art and say, oh this is great, you know. But then I'm looking at it more of a 3D you know, uh, technical side. And I'm just, I'm seeing all the work that would go into making this. It's just crazy. My brain is going nuts. Yeah, definitely lots of different items, lots of different, uh, item or lots of different assets that could be, you know, expanded upon after this art is, uh, is finalized. So for example, let's just up res one of these. Uh, this one in particular I like because of how it's a single thing, it's a single item where we can take the background off and, and put it into other scenes or we can modify in Photoshop in other ways. Yeah, so here's the up image. You can see now all the detail that Alan was talking about. Wow, yeah. Phenomenal. For Just for concept, instead of, you know, Try to uh, compare this to a blank page where someone asks you to create a concept for a sci-fi, you know, little shop. Um, you could take it so far, but this is definitely gives you a huge advantage as a concept artist to uh, to to jumpstart your process and creating something pretty much, you know, insane is the word really. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, and especially powerful for uh, environment artists, character artists who have a basic idea of something where maybe the concept artist is busy or some other uh, project came up where the artist themselves needed to create something. This is a great tool for that. Yeah. Great. And let me be clear also, a great tool as a supplement, not as a replacement. Right. But do you think in the uh, near future, these tools will be able to also generate the final 3D geometry with all the textures, just pretty much plug and play. And when, you know, when that does arrive, like what does that mean for the industry? I think it would be a long time for something this detailed, for like this image in particular. There's a lot of stuff in here where you know this would be like you like you said multiple weeks of work right there's a lot of detail in this there's a lot of different technical things a lot of technical challenges that would need to be done well uh, especially for you know large studios or even a small studio where everything needs to be very particular um i think we're a long way from this being a full 3d asset uh from ai yeah, so once we have the general understanding of how to create something specific uh, and in the style that we want, we can go back up now to the environment that we were approaching earlier, where once we have the image that we like, which in this example would be the bottom right one, we can upscale it. And then once we have that, here you can see I already requested the upscale. It's somewhere in here. But once we have that, we can up-res it, copy it to Photoshop. And here you can see the base image. And we can start to modify and change a couple things. And of course, I am not a professional concept artist. This is for me as an architectural designer and a, a world designer to best portray my idea as quickly as possible. Without AI, this would be very difficult. Of course, I can sketch, but it's not quite the same. It doesn't give the same mood. Right, and it's definitely more powerful than using just placeholders, cutouts, and blocks. This gives you a much better understanding of what the uh, vision is. Definitely. So with this base image, um, and also if there are some other ones that you like, you can begin to cut out parts of them right and then you can place those in here so you can see this is from the uh one of the other images same with these where we wanted some of these types of rocks to give some variation to the landscape and in addition to that 
what we did was in the areas that were very busy, like for example, this little road thing, we didn't really want that. So we can just paint over it. Very simple. Keep it so that you're portraying the mood and not necessarily specific parts of it. And we wanted this lake to be bigger so we can draw in a larger lake. And then once we have this, this is a great starting point, of course. And uh, from here, we can define it further with more detailed um, sketches on top of it or pass to a concept artist to actually take it to completion. Um, for the purposes of this, what I did was I took the, the spatial ideas that I had from before on the Figma and made blockouts and inserted those blockouts into this so we can have the idea of scale with those in contrast to the environment. And then from there, the more detail into the environment where we're placing in just rough um, cuts of different objects. So for example, these are Easter eggs pointing to different things and other parts of the website or the world um, and combining them all into this, which is going to give us the final rough image <laughs> of this idea that we had. When you're building these concepts or layouts, what about the scale, the actual proportions um, in reference to like the physical space? How many meters, how many miles? Do, do you incorporate all of that as well or does that come later? Yeah, that's a great question. So where I start putting in scale is um, in this example, it would be in the blockouts. So once I'm doing the blockouts, I am you know, putting in the size of the character into it and then creating the spaces around that. Um, and then once I have those blockouts scaled to the character, I can put them into this concept and then I can have an idea of what the actual space would feel like. And in this case, it would feel very big, but that was on purpose. Yeah, so this is how we can use Mid Journey as a base for improving upon and adding in some slight detail for the rest of our team to show our ideas. Well, this is really cool. Trey, thank you for uh, walking us through the process and explaining all of that. Just for fun, if we have a few more minutes, if you have a few more minutes, I would love to generate maybe even a couple uh, characters uh, using Mid Journey for, you know, concept art character design. Yeah, let's do it. Wow, these are really cool. So I see some of the uh, images that you're currently showing are the ones that I requested in the past as well. A lot of little cute robots and um, animals. That's really cool. Uh, just to show how the character design works, maybe just for fun, we can uh, do something more, you know, fantasy like. How about we generate like a forest troll that's in the style of like Clash of Clans? Yeah. So maybe uh, using that kind of lighting and that texture of like stylized cartoony art but maybe like a troll holding a sword maybe you know have some uh ancient gear on i don't know so something that uh would would be along those lines i would love to see that yeah let's test it so force troll character wearing armor and holding a sword can you also specify emotion? Maybe like it's, you know, I don't know, battle, angry. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try multiple different expressions and, okay. uh, and poses and see if that can give us um, a couple different things to use. If not, we can go more specific and create uh, one angry pose and then maybe one neutral pose and so forth. But let's try both multiple expressions and poses. Let's see what I had up here. White background. Let's just copy it. So white background is important. So all of the details put onto the character, uh, full color, 3d model, light and shadow would give us that 3d look. We can also put in, um, an example of a, re a specific render engine. So from before we did unreal engine, we could do, um, Octane renderer or Unity, um, the AI will pick up on those on those cues. 
No, I think hyper-realistic Unreal uh, is, is cool. Yeah, so let's try that. 3D model, hyper-realism. One thing that I love about Clash of Clans when I look at their art is it doesn't have a lot of textures. Like, everything looks very plasticky and clean, almost, like, simplified. And to me, that's very uh, appealing, you know? Obviously, it's a matter of preference, but personally, I love that art. That's why I'm requesting to see Clash of Clans. I, I wonder if uh, Midjourney would be able to pick that up. Yeah, let's try it. Oh wow, so this is uh, this is looking really cool. Yeah, one of the things that I'm noticing right away, I love the art style. I would love to see a more dynamic pose of something like this. But uh, honestly, as a character artist, uh, I have to say these are pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's try, let's try one specific pose. So from this, say for example, we want to use this top left one. We can copy that and take it into Photoshop as a new, new uh, document. And let's just take this guy. No, you can feed it to mid journey. You betcha. Oh, wow. Let's remove the background, see if this works. This is so good. I love how the eyes are darker and then the, uh, like I'm just drooling over the art, you know, uh, okay. so amazing. Yeah, so I'm just doing a rough pass here. Yeah, so once we have just the base character, we can export this as a PNG. Let's just say troll one. Go back into Mid Journey. And we can take that image and just drop it right in to this chat that we have. Copy the link. And now what we can do is say, imagine that link. And we can do angry pose, battle, stance. Give him an axe too, maybe like a. Or a spear or something, or sword, I don't mm -hmm. know. a weapon. Holding a spear. Um, and then we'll say the same thing. So now when you're doing this, is this public and everyone see uh, what you're doing? Or is this like a private thing? How does that work? Yeah, so because I'm in the Mid Journey bot, this is private. Um, but you can go into the Mid Journey channel once you have access to it, which going through the motions of getting access to Midjourney in general will give you access to this. And they, people create stuff in here all the time. And this is all public. So, you know, someone can say, hey, that's my prompt. But the truth is, this is like Google Images. It's just there for anyone mm -hmm. to grab it or whatever, right? Yep. And the Midjourney website has a great um, gallery, gallery, yeah, great gallery as well. The um, one thing I noticed about their website is the uh, images are outstanding and they're great. Um, but if you click on it, can you click on it to up, uh, zoom in or no? I cannot. You can't. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. So that's that that would be the only downside because obviously they're just showing you these to get you. Uh, interested in using the engine because you can't, you know, up res these or, you know, you, all you have is kind of thumbnail view, but it gives you a very good idea of what's possible. And of course, uh, you can also uh, see what prompts people use, right? That's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can really start to see the depth available. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's go back to our troll. Yeah, so going back to the troll, to our little bot, um, let's try, like we said, we copied in the link to this image. Angry pose, battle stance, holding a spear, and let's just add in all of 
the previous stuff as well and then let's see what happens yeah, so you can see mid journey took the angry pose uh and also the traits of this character but it missed out on you know holding the spear um and uh you know wearing some more armor but you can see you can play with this a lot and get a lot of different outcomes and it's maintaining it's maintaining most of it where you could see it's a similar character but yet it's a little bit different mm -hmm. exactly well just for a uh, high contrast of this can we just do one more last one before we uh, end uh let's do one where he's like uh, super happy just so we could see a drastic contrast between angry and happy with the same everything else is exactly the same just to see the expressions yeah let's do it so same thing copy the image here let's do happy let's just, actually let's take in force troll character Happy face expression. Happy. And when you repeat words in these prompts, uh, the AI will begin to pick on pick up on it more. Uh, it's very similar to doing an actual wait, where, for example, if we did happy facial expression in the brackets, colon two. It's very similar to if we would just say happy a, a couple oh. of different ways. Oh, that's mm -hmm. really cool. And let's do, um, let's just try this for now. Happy facial expression, joyful, really making sure that the, the AI picks up on this. Right. And then same aspect ratio. Now let's see what happens. Yeah, so we can definitely see that the, the joyful expression was coming through in a couple of these. Although it does still look angry, it it did capture that pretty well. I think. Um, the, so the, the biggest thing, you know, looking at the top right corner one, you know, he could you could clearly see the smile is being uh, generated, but the, the eyebrows, right? You see how they're pointing down? They still give that mean angry feel um to the character and it, all four of these you see how the eyebrows especially towards the nose are like pointing down that's what's fighting with the happy face if you bring those up um i think that would be tremendously uh different but the bottom left one i think is the closest as far as like you know he's he's happy to see someone right yeah <laughs> he's he's looking at a friend yeah, no, this is amazing. This is uh, truly is amazing. Hey, Trey, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. This was really helpful for me, too, to see the process, the workflow of the environment. And I love the character artists. I, I literally get, I don't know what it is. I get excited. I could do the art, the, the character part of it, you know, for the next four hours, just generating concepts and doing different variations and expressions. So thank you. I really appreciate uh, the time. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. So if anyone wants to follow you or um, reach out, anything, what what would be the best place to do this? Yeah, so my Instagram would probably be the best place for that. It is treymarshall.xyz. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, watch thousands of new uh, fans join your account. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks again, man. Awesome. And I will uh, talk to you soon. Sounds good, Alan. Thanks.